It might be time we stop talking about civil rights, especially the civil rights of black Americans. And it might be time, because it's been that time for a while now, that we start talking about the human rights of black Americans and how that struggle is connected to the liberation struggles of oppressed people everywhere. That's actually not a radical idea because it's not a new idea and it's not my idea. Now you tell me how can the plight of everybody on this earth reach the halls of the United Nations and you have 22 million Afro-Americans whose churches are being bombed, <laughs> whose little girls are being murdered, whose, whose leaders are being shot down in broad daylight. Now you tell me why the leaders of this struggle have never taken it before the United Nations. That idea comes from the black liberation tradition in the United States. It regards the liberation of black Americans from systemic racism towards an actualization of their humanity as united with other international struggles for liberation. And rethinking the struggle for civil rights as a struggle for human rights for black Americans forces all of us to rethink what it is that's being fought for. Scholar Erica L. Coleman recently noted in Time magazine that while many of the leaders of the civil rights movement focused on the language of civil rights, we did see an emergence of a more explicit internationalist approach to the liberation of black Americans, an approach embodied and articulated by Malcolm X. Some people may wonder why our brothers from Africa and Asia have not spoken out more boldly or without uh, compromise on the injustices that the 22 million Afro-Americans experience in this country. They can't speak out as long as these uh, injustices are labeled by us as civil rights and this remains a domestic issue and none of our people from abroad because of protocol can become involved in Uncle Sam's domestic problems. Martin Luther King Jr., especially towards the end of his life, firmly tied the fight for equality to international struggles. He was a big and vocal opponent of the Vietnam War, and he saw the anti-imperialist fight as the same as the civil rights fight, something he made clear at the United Nations in 1967. It is our belief, it is my belief, that justice is indivisible. Uh, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere, and I'm not going to limit my concern and my commitment to justice for Negroes. I'm concerned in this country about justice for Appalachian whites. I want to end poverty for everybody. So that on the international scene, I'm concerned about justice for everybody. And Angela Davis, who has long been critical of the United States' hypocrisy between its foreign policy and its rhetoric of promoting human rights, envisioned even basic access to health care as a human right. I want to know, how come we have to pay so much just to go to the doctor or go to the hospital? That's, that's a human right. And then I read these stories about black women who don't have the, the entrance fee to get into a hospital, who end up delivering their babies on the hospital steps or in the parking lot or in the ambulance, assisted only by an ambulance attendant. Hey, you know, that's a violation of, a gross violation of human rights. Civil rights and human rights aren't the same thing, but they do often overlap. Civil rights are rights that you and I are guaranteed by virtue of being a citizen of a particular country. They're rights given to us by the state, like voting rights. Human rights, enshrined in the UN Declaration of Human Rights, are rights that are meant to be guaranteed by virtue of all of us being human beings, like the right to not be enslaved and the right to be equal before the law. So when we hear about moving from a framework of civil rights to a framework of human rights, it means that we're situating, legally and in our minds, the black American struggle within the fight against tyranny and systemic oppression around the world. You have the right to not be enslaved. What's our current incarceration system? You have the right to not be tortured. What's police brutality? What's solitary confinement? You have the right to peacefully assemble. What's been happening to all the peaceful protesters again? You have the right to own property. What's that about zoning laws and bank loans? Making systemic racism accountable to the very state that is sustained by it doesn't get us very far because it makes the state the criminal, the judge, the jury, and the executioner, quite literally. It assumes that the state itself is virtuous, the same state that had to be forced violently to change the constitution to recognize black people as citizens. Now don't get me wrong, regarding systemic racism against black Americans in the United States as a human rights issue alone doesn't lead to a path of undoing racism, of dismantling it. After all, human rights themselves are politicized and weaponized in the international body. 
When was the last time the United States, the United Kingdom, or France were held accountable for their human rights violations? But by seeing black civil rights as human rights, black liberation itself becomes connected to the struggles and liberation of other groups around the world. And again, that's nothing new. Martin Luther King Jr. made that a part of his message. Malcolm X traveled the world to build relationships. The Black Panther Party opened up an international headquarters in Algeria. In the wake of COINTELPRO and other persecution, black American revolutionaries like Stokely Carmichael and Asada Shakur fled to newly independent African countries or Cuba. That internationalist struggle has continued. The movement for black lives acknowledged in its 2016 policy platform the connection between American militarism and the Israeli occupation of Palestine. And the Palestinian movement isn't just a human rights movement, but a movement for sovereignty, for liberation. We've also seen an international resonance with the recent uprisings in the United States following the police killing of George Floyd, an international resonance that has increased scrutiny on local racism. In France, Black Lives Mattering has meant demanding justice for Adama Traore, a man killed by police. Those cops were exonerated of all wrongdoing in early June of this year. In Brazil, Black Lives Mattering has meant demanding further justice for Marial Franco, a Brazilian politician and activist who was assassinated by two former cops. By reassessing our perspective of the Black American struggle as a human rights struggle and as a liberation struggle, we are able to morally take it out of the hands that created and continue to sustain the system that's being resisted. And it's only then that we can understand how big and connected the fight really is. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching. I hope this video was able to provide for some of you a fresh perspective on how we can talk about what's happening in this country right now. Let us know in the comments what you thought, what else you want us to cover in this new commentary series that we're developing, and we'll see you soon.